There is no Archimedean point from which those living through a mass psychosis can observe their collective madness. Uh, and that's why President Trump has apparently thrown Mike Pence under the bus. It, it was a renaissance of, of what I imagine it to be like when, when there was debate here going on with our founding fathers. That was the kind of debate that was going on. Idiots. Her Clinton Foundation slush fund sold access to the State Department. New charges dogging the Democratic nominee. That, that you may have... That that you may have I'm not concerned about anything with you the may have Russian indictments investigation because it's a hoax. Are you That's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming? Allegations of pay to play. Proof of a pay for play scheme. Pay to play arrangement between uh, the foundation and Hillary. Exactly. Here, here we go. That, well, uh, if Let's you don't go. mind, Let's Mr. President, Come on. that this caravan was an invasion. As you know, Mr. President. Clinton, just how easy it was for Clinton donors to get Clinton favor. We know a dirty pay for play scheme when we see it, but not Hillary's spokesman, who arrogantly tells voters who question the Clinton Foundation's ethics. If any American voter is troubled by the idea that the Clintons want to continue working to solve the AIDS crisis on the side while Hillary Clinton is president, then don't vote for her. Then don't vote for her. Then don't She's never been a witness in court. It would have been impossible for a judge Your to... Your affidavit was ruled... May I, may I please finish? ...incorrect and not credible. May I have the courtesy of uh, finishing? Court. Mm. These people knew that this was written by Fusion GPS. They knew that they were putting it out to, uh, to willing uh, people within the media that would take and run with these narratives. And look, they, they'll deny this, but the FBI knew damn well, and the DOJ, there was a small cadre of them, they knew this was all a lie. Uh, he says because he gave the uh, president, uh, vice president advice about uh, certifying what happened yesterday. But ultimately, so many of those people at the Stop the Steal rally thought that that could happen. That's a fairy tale. So I have 19 things in my affidavit. Uh, I was at the TCF Center for 27 hours. I, I would never, I don't know any woman in the world that would write a, an affidavit under oath. There has been, in the case of another one, not named in this lawsuit, uh, to my knowledge, Tucker Carlson, that he couldn't be taken seriously, um, that the general tenor of his show should then inform a viewer that Carlson is not stating actual facts about the topics he discusses and is instead engaging in exaggeration and non-literal commentary. These other hosts who are people who trafficked the information that Smartmatic is talking about in this lawsuit. Yeah, let me tell you why. I find certainly no pride. A $1.3 billion defamation lawsuit from Dominion Voting System. CNN Sarah Murray joins me now to discuss it. Just to write it. <laughs> you know, you can go to prison for this. Debate on, on both sides of that issue, it from both good. Republicans and Democrats. Well, I don't know how reasonable or unreasonable they are, but millions of people believe the big lie. And it was the first time that I can say I witnessed that level of it in the four years that I've been here. So people are dead, people are injured, and now there is a big effort to disenfranchise millions of Americans based on these lies that, oh, we weren't supposed to believe them. And I take pride in that occurring Regardless of right wing fringe conspiracy theories peddling these unsubstantiated claims about election fraud. So now in a new court filing, her attorneys are arguing these were just her opinions, that it was up to the public to form their own opinion about whether votes were actually changed by these election machines. My manager had came up to I had called my manager over to a specific uh, tabulating machine. I showed him a number on it, which was close to 500. It should never go over 50. Batches come in, ballots come in batches of 50. I said, we have a severe problem here. Nick, a ton of which is a part owner of Dominion. And um, he said, Melissa, I don't want to hear that we have a problem. He said, we are here to assist with IT. We are not here to run their election. That is exactly what he said to me. Um, at that point, I was just really frustrated and upset. I, I could tell what was going on. I, I knew what was going on at that point. What was going on? Um, he was in on it. He was in on it. They were cheating. It, it, it was very, very apparent. It was apparent he knew. It was apparent that he was in on it. And when he caught on to me being in, knowing, 
me knowing that he was in on it, he just wanted nothing to do with me. Yeah, John, it's official. Sidney Powell is a massive fraud. That's according to Sidney Powell herself. Similarly, the whole election fraud narrative, that too is a complete fiction, a complete fraud. That also according to Sidney Powell. All Americans need to see that, if, uh, in my opinion, to have a full understanding of everything that was being argued. It, it is worth uh, the the permanently being enshrined within the civics of our country um, to learn a lesson forever going forward. So Congressman and Nick said that there was a big data loss. Um, they started freaking out, stepped off the stage, got on their phones. Um, also, Ellie, I mean, is it true? I mean, didn't a lot of people believe her? Wasn't there an insurrection at the Capitol? This minor matter of an insurrection at the Capitol where people who believe those false claims stormed the building, five people dead? I asked them what was going on. They said it was taken care of. Nick sent Samuel over to this warehouse. Not this time. For about three hours. When he got back, I said, where were you? Where'd you go? Um, he said, I was at the warehouse. And I said, what were you doing there? And he's like, you know. Pure fiction. It's fiction. Nothing, they just needed my help. Well, um, I said, where is this warehouse? And he said. It's totally made up. Because I, I wasn't putting two and two together yet that I, you know, was initially supposed to work there because I'd never even looked up the address. It's fiction. It's fiction. And um, he. There was something to this defense, too, which may ring as familiar to some people. It's very similar to the Sidney Powell argument. What I believe is it wasn't a data loss. It was actually when they found out Trump was ahead 100,000 100, votes, and they sent Nick over there to assist with these um, ballots that came in on in these um, vans full of ballots that people can attest to that they witnessed. No, we made this one up. Being carried out of these vans at the TCF Center. We made it up. I didn't see any ballots being carried out of vans. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't see anything being carried out of them, but I know people who have. What they're trying to do is take advantage of legal protections that are given to parody, to things that are obviously meant as sort of sarcastic or humorous social commentary. And hours later, we resumed the democratic process that Indeed. we take so yeah. much pride in that i wish that was what would be remembered about yesterday well that's true it's not uh that'll be one of the things but it's not but i know people who have and did see this through that bring in one of the jurors that point is worth ruminating on and remembering for one simple reason history is used to hurt some people and to help other people gain power history is never neutral President Trump committed a high crime that President Trump's conduct violated the law that it constituted incitement, showing really powerful images and movies of, of the January 6th terrorist attack on the Capitol. That was horrific. All 100 of us lived through that, and, and it was despicable. We said that before, and we have laughed as we did, but actually it's not funny. People will believe this crap. Some already do. Anyone who was physically present at the Capitol that day knows it's ridiculous. Trump voters weren't trying to kill her, neither were other U.S. senators. A lot of the rioters were angrier at Mitch McConnell than they were at any Democrat. It's as if they were somehow channeling both Howard Jarvis and Howard Beale at the very same time. When the individual starts to perceive things in a different way, is frightened on account of it, appears confused, and does not know how to explain the strange things that are happening, it wasn't a fair process. It, it can be a fair process. The former, the late California tax activist. The latter, of network movie fame. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not gonna take this anymore! None. The next step is what Arietti calls a phase of psychotic insight, whereby an individual succeeds in putting things together by devising a pathological way of seeing reality, which allows him to explain his abnormal experiences. The phenomenon is called insight because the patient finally sees meaning and relations in his experiences. None. But the he goes, I have no idea what I'm doing. He was with three other people. I said, um, uh, 
Nope, we were trained on the adjudication process, not the tabulation process. A mass psychosis is an epidemic of madness, and it occurs when a large portion of society loses touch with reality and descends into delusions. Nobody wants to come forward. They're getting threatened. They're, they're people, their lives are getting ruined. I can't even get an actual job anymore. I can't. <laughs> because Democrats like to ruin your lives. That's why. All right. All right. The insight is psychotic because it is based on delusions, not on adaptive and life-promoting ways of relating to whatever threats precipitated the panic. The delusions, in other words, allow the panic-stricken individual to escape from the flood of negative emotions, but at the cost of losing touch with reality. And for this reason, Arietti says that a psychotic break can be viewed as an abnormal way of dealing with an extreme state of anxiety. But your campaign had an ad showing migrants climbing over walls and well, so on. Well, that's true. It poured, it, but they weren't actors. They're not going to be doing they that. They weren't actors. Well, no, it's true. Do you think they were actors? Oh, they weren't actors. They didn't come from Hollywood. Two factors are important in the dynamics of a psychotic break, he writes. One is an ego that is weak or insecure. The other factor is a flood of feeling that cannot be integrated by the ego. Such a phenomenon is not a thing of fiction. Two examples of mass psychoses are the American and European witch hunts of the 16th and 17th centuries, and the rise of totalitarianism in the 20th century. So that was what was happening on the, th on the fourth when I got on the floor. I didn't have my GOP tag on, so automatically I was assumed to be a Democrat. And uh, I have seen some women who c came to me and I said, Let the, let get, let's get these MFs out. They have so far been extremely successful in their endeavors. In fact, so much so that we are right now living in the time when they intend to see this long span work come to fruition. During the witch hunts, thousands of individuals, mostly women, were killed not for any crimes they committed, but because they became the scapegoats of societies gone mad, or a more recent and a more deadly example of a mass psychosis. It was not because um, I was not there for, for my party or trying to do something on behalf of my party. I'm just trying to ensure that the right thing is being done. So when I got the nonpartisan tag, at the counting board, they, the poll workers were very respectful because of my nonpartisan tag. But when I had the GOP tag, the first thing they said is six feet. You know the rule or you will be sent out. It was a collective detachment from reality and a descent into delusions and paranoia that permitted the rise of the all-powerful totalitarian governments that destroyed the lives of hundreds of millions. They didn't know what that meant, but it didn't take me long to figure out why it was saying, what, what it meant. Um, it is, when they would scan a, ba scan a ballot, nothing, nothing would come on the system. The totalitarian systems of the 20th century represent a kind of collective psychosis, writes the medical doctor Just Mirlu. Whether gradually or suddenly, reason and common human decency are no longer possible in such a system. There is only a pervasive atmosphere of terror and a projection of the enemy, imagined to be in our midst. Thus society turns on itself, urged on by the ruling authorities. So they would manually enter these, and uh, that's when I figured out that they were not even referring to the poll book. So it is EPB slash S, meaning election poll book or system. So none of these details went in either of those. And uh, the thing that um, I said, when I started uh, writing down the ballot numbers and the last names of the person of the ballot, uh, the, that had the name on that ballot, they were all in sequence. These are absentee ballots, mail-in mail -in ballots. They cannot be in sequence. 2232 two, cannot have 2233 two, three next to it because if they're mailed in, they come in all different numbers. And when, when I started, started noticing that these numbers are almost next to each other, like one or the other was in the middle, but then they were almost next to each other, my, my antennas went up. That's exactly when I thought something is not right here. Then I asked the supervisor, there was not even a date on those uh, envelopes. It said November 0-2020. There was no second number there. Then I said, what is the date on this one? 
then they got really mad at me. They said, you're not letting us do our job. You're disturbing us. And at that point, because we really don't want to be kicked out, you know, so we were just kind of not challenging anything because we want to still stay in the room because we barely had anybody. We are our own worst enemies. Or as the Latin proverb puts it, man is a wolf to man. In Civilization in Transition, Jung states that this proverb is a sad yet eternal truism. And our wolf-like tendencies come most prominently into play at those times of history when mental illness becomes the norm rather than the exception in a society, a situation which Jung termed a psychic epidemic. Um, not only that, the sequence ballot numbers were all from the same area, like the Goddard Street in the downtown Detroit. Goddard Street, sequential ballot, its signatures were all alike. They had no date stamp. It said like it was empty after zero. There was no third or second or first or nothing. And uh, they were none of them were coming up in the system. They were all being entered manually. They even knew that none of these details would even be in the poll book or in the system. Bogus election conspiracies that they knew were not true. The former president's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, and legal associate, Sidney Powell. Uh, Smartmatic, or SGO Smartmatic, Smartmatic and Dominion, Smartmatic and uh, ESNS, which is another um, major voting machine. Now we know a lot more about Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Russia, yeah, three and a half right. million dollars, oligarchs, Chinese nationals, private equity. Uh, I think Joe Biden um, might not be liking his own positions coming up fairly shortly mm -hmm. if this is the game he wants to play. And really the, co the core of these uh, voting systems are um, rife with vulnerabilities. Um, I was an information warfare officer. It's false. So I looked at ways to penetrate, uh, defeat and corrupt uh, other systems. It never happened. Whether it was through electronic warfare, through uh, other means. And these systems are. It's a fake. Highly, uh, highly vulnerable to penetrations at multiple levels throughout the system. Um, the, the easiest way and the most um, discreet way is USB drives. Um, no way. Not this time. We created it. In classified systems in the military, um, I worked with both secret and top secret and other special access programs. All those machines uh, had the USB drives um, deactivated. You could not use them just because of the, the critical vulnerability. These, these machines all work off of USB drives, and so... It's a total fabrication. There is no control. There is no chain of custody in the USB drives. This one was invented by a writer. Workers can stick a USB drive in. We could stick a USB drive into any of your laptops. It never happened. You don't know what's on there, and, and, and you can change software. It never happened. You can change operating systems with the USB drive. It's a made-up tale. Blank ballots. They can delete data. They can uh, blank. They can mass adjudicate uh, write-in ballots. And so it's it is designed to be inaccurate. It's designed to if if a an individual or a team of individuals uh, had a malign purpose, um, this would be the tool that I would want to use. And all I can tell you is it never happened. We let them get away with this. I don't know what what happens after this. This was a concerted plan to fix this election. It never happened. It never happened. Workers can stick a USB drive in with the USB drives. It's false. It never happened. It's a fake. It's fiction. It's an urban legend to, uh, that never happened. Some of the, uh, the leaked information from the Panama banking system. No way. We got you. Not a chance. Every week, thousands of people join the millions who already have MCI friends and family. If you'd like to be one of them, give us a ring. After all, shouldn't your least expensive calls be to the people you care about and call all the time? That we didn't get a chance to call. There are hundreds of them, and they specifically allege similar acts of fraud. It never happened. Rudy Giuliani likely won't be the last person sued by Dominion voting systems, but the former president's lawyer is looking at a $1.3 billion dollar lawsuit. Why? Saying this. This Dominion company is a radical left company. These crooked Dominion machines. They cheated with the machines. Then a Venezuelan company countered our votes. 
that if you do the slightest bit of due diligence, you will find out that this company has been in trouble many, many times, was just disqualified in the state of Texas, under another name was thrown out of Chicago. We've, what we are seeing right now, I don't think we've ever seen before, um, and it's affecting certainly our good name, um, and, it's, and, and it's raising serious doubts in electors' minds across the country. In its infancy, had ties with Hugo Chavez, Venezuela, conducted fraudulent elections in two South American countries, and have been disqualified in several other countries and states. Uh, the 1.3 billion, there's certainly a lot of questions on that. So there is no money, Chris, that can even begin to make up for the damage and reputation uh, that our company and the customers, the election officials that have used our technology to count ballots. And um, it, it, the actual calculation of the 1.3 billion dollars is, is a legal calculation and, and we will, we will play that out in court. Uh, but if I could trade our reputation back from November 1st and go back before uh, these false accusations were lobbed against us and our employees, I would do that in a heartbeat. They all stand accused of fi spinning a fake tale with zero evidence that Smartmatic's voting technology was somehow compromised and to blame for the former president's election loss. Today's announcement came as something of a surprise. 